Matt Burns. I'm Mike Pearson. We are the uh, collectively the Bot Brothers. We're hoping that we can talk about education and AI and education and all things teacher related because that's what we do. Sounds good to me. Great. Let's hit it. Well, so one thing we were talking about is, you know, how is it this whole AI thing kind of got on our radar? Because obviously it's been around for a while, right? Like that there's been yep. AI in through like uh, Google searches to kind of like auto populate responses yep. or. Uh, you know, you think about your, your cell phone, you like use the screen, uh, you kind of like open up your, your, your Apple iPhone. Right. Even and, your Netflix algorithm. Right, right. right. The, all the searching stuff, the kind of Amazon aggregate. stuff, self-driving cars with the Teslas and all that. Right. So it's not new, but when ChatGPT broke, right. everything changed, at least in our world, right? Right. Well, that's just it. It's like, it's like now everything's AI, right? Even though there was it, but now I think, I think because it's so, it's impacting so many people, ChatGPT is the program, GPT-4 now, um, is the one we're talking about. It's, it's, it's out there everywhere and so immediate that it's not like, you know, maybe I, when I drive, when I go buy a car, I'll think about something that can self-drive. But every day I'm answering, you know, emails and, and, and working with students with writing. So it's directly impact, impactful, I guess. Um, so AI is just now with us and we have to deal with it. Right. And I, you know, one thing that I remember, you know, Mike and I had an opportunity to do a, pre- a couple of presentations with uh, other educators recently. And I remember you kind of telling a story about how you, how it kind of, how ChatGPT got on your radar that I always thought was really kind of helpful. Um, because it, it, everything's been changing so, so quickly for us, but we're all kind of coming at this AI stuff, uh, you know, from different sort of, uh, I guess, our own kind of life experiences. And, and we're all kind of responding, I think, in very similar ways. Like there's the fear, there's a concern, things about plagiarism, privacy, right, right. et cetera. Yeah. But uh, the bottom line is it's here. Uh, but I really kind of liked the way that you kind of approached it, uh, or rather kind of like your story, like how you got to it or how, I don't mm-hmm. know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So... So last last year in November, I was listening to some other podcast, um, and they they were talking about Chat GPT, and all of a sudden they were having it write screenplays in the in the style of Quentin Tarantino, and they read it they read it off, and I, I was like, that's good. And then they read a poem in the style of uh, Wordsworth, um, and, and it, so suddenly I was uh, it, it's, it's directly in my field. It's writing creative works. I'd never heard of it, so I went and found Chat GPT. Started running on my own. I'm thinking my work computer of all things, and and at, at the school I work at, it wasn't blocked. And then that week, my my students, my juniors, were working on a satire, and um, one of the kids, I had them up on. We have, we have a system called Hapara, which allows you to see what's on kids' screens, as we have Chromebooks. And so I was looking on Hapara, and, and there was a student in the back that was using ChatGPT. So I was like, Hey, what, what you, come here? What are you doing? And I wasn't mad because I was interested in, in the technology because it was, it was so mind blowing. And he comes up and I go, are you using ChatGPT? And he's like, yeah, are you? I'm like, yeah, look at this. And I go, what are you doing? And he said, he's like, I'm trying to see if it'll edit my satire. And I was like, is it working? He's like, not really, but look what it can do. And then we dumped an AP prompt into it and it wrote an argument. And we were both like minds blown. We're both like, no one's ever going to write a paper ever again. Right. Why would you? And I'm like, ah, I'm out of a job. <laughs> I'm losing my mind. Um, I always started bombing your phone, Pat, all yeah, the time. I'm like, we're, yep. we're done. Like, it's honest. You know, I'm, and I'm not, you know, I'm not deep enough in the pension to be retired yet. Right. So <laughs> <laughs> having seriously existential crisis. Um, so I start reading everything and I start playing with chat GPT more and more and more. And I finally hit upon this. It'll make my job easier. And then I was like, it'll make my job easier. How great is that? Because any teachers listening to this, have you ever had anything that's made your life easier in education? I'm going to guess the answer is no. Yeah, typically it seems like it's new initiatives, uh, new initiatives upon new initiatives. And oftentimes old initiatives become uh, new initiatives. And and they kind of recycle back and then they kind of go away. And then you have the same thing come back like 10 years later. And you're like, we already did this. Um, yeah, remember that we had our, our teacher friend in school that had right. that worked for like 35 years and had a whole PowerPoint of every initiative that our school district did. Yeah. And it was like every year or two or two or three years. And uh, it's just it's incessant. Right. But to your point, like so that's just like add our work is kind of adding and adding and adding and building and building and building. Um, and it almost kind of to some extent, extent feels like you're kind of spinning your wheels. But with this, it's like, wait, I can actually almost buy back my time. Right. So in terms right. of like lesson plannings or 
uh, you know, uh, generating questions for, for, you know, a novel or whatever, um, you know, well, helping students kind of edit papers, et cetera, get yeah. feedback. There's just so many sort of ways you could use the thing uh, or use this AI that's, that's really kind of allowing us to kind of just take some time back because we can work more efficiently. Yeah, I know that you and I were having lunch one day, and we were um, we were uh, we were playing around with Chat GPT, and, and I was kind of showing you what I was working on, and we were we were working on developing a presentation using AI in the classroom. And I remember you you saying like, I'm, oh, "Man, I I I I know I want to do this lesson. I haven't had a chance to really put it together because you're super busy. You know, you've got you've got family at home, and you hadn't gotten to it. And there's all the papers. What do you, do you remember? What that story was about? I think it was a lesson about. Introductions and conclusions. Sure, right. So what we were doing is we were in the middle of a unit, and I was trying to kind of set the students up for uh, you know writing an essay, right? We always do essays at the end of units, or oftentimes do anyways. Uh, and I was trying to help students understand, you know, what is it? What does a poorly written introduction look like? But then what would be a well written introduction look like? And so on the spot, we were just kind of brainstorming, like how, how can we kind of input something or see, see if G, ChatGPT could put it together. Uh, and, and not surprisingly, it was able to do that. Uh, and so uh, we just asked, you know, put together three poorly written introductions. We looked at them and we kind of laughed at them. They sounded very, like, beyond basic. I mean, they, they sounded like, we're, you know, we're in the high school level, but this was looking at, um, or they sounded like something from, like, a, a second grader. Right. Or, right. or, or the or kid that just school. didn't care enough. To yeah, write, fair enough. Know, like, right. This is my paper. My paper is going to be a paper. Right, and right, right. Thing. It was pretty, yeah, pretty pedestrian. In any event, and, and, then, and then so I was able to have students kind of reflect on, like, what made them not work. Uh, and then from there, we looked at some well-written ones that, that ChatGPT spat out, but we framed it from the perspective of, like, well, give us, like, an introduction with, like, uh, an anecdote or story, right, to start off right. with. And it did that. Uh, we asked it to use, uh, you know, a quote, and it could do that. We asked it to uh, provide uh, or to use the structure that from they say, I say, that, that great college text that allows uh, writing classes will use. Gerald and Graf. Uh, yeah, 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 Graf and Birkenstein, I think is the other yeah, name. Yeah. Um, in any event, so, and it could do that, right? And we had to modify it a little bit. It wasn't perfect, but it was good enough where the students could see the difference. And, and I was able to walk them through being able to identify the different parts of these better or well-written introductions and say, hey, can you guys do this? And they're like, well, yeah. I said, well, then go do it. And so they had those models. Uh, it was clear. It was easy. Um, they could understand kind of how the parts work and, and how you kind of put them together. And, um, and it, it, was just, it was great. It was great. And it saved a lot of time. We put it together and you know, had it ready in 10 minutes, and I right. instituted it that day. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so rather than come up with all the different samples, right. examples myself, yeah, I that, yeah. which I could have done and have done in the past, but it was just, it's, just, it's time intensive, right? So how can I just... Well, streamline it and, and so much so much of our job is is creating content and unless you necessarily go from a textbook which I don't, I don't think a lot of teachers do some do or you've got your old your old slide decks or your old files or however you work it but but oftentimes you want to generate some good examples and bad examples and this one chat gpt was able to nail it like the, the, the good examples were not like outstanding they weren't like you know world class but they're but they're solid but the bad examples um like really worked. And then and it's just the fact that you didn't have to sit down and even just like type it out. Right. It, it, cause it, cause it works so fast that you were able to, I think, it, I think we, we did your lesson in about 10 minutes. We yeah. created the content right. and then you, you're the teacher, you know how to do, do the lesson. So you didn't have to ask chat and GPT to do that. Although you can right. actually. Right. And there've been other ways that, you know, we've been able to kind of utilize it. I mean, I mentioned, I think like discussion questions, right. There are ways right. like if you're doing a, you know, a, a novel or a short story, Heck, a poem, essay. Uh, in, Social in my case, issue. Yeah, in my case, we were actually using a, um, a documentary, and so I had to pull up some questions for that, and I just said, hey, give me a list of 10 questions on, on the uh, documentary Blackfish. Uh, just deals with captivity and what have you. Um, and it did that. Now, did I use all the questions? No, because they weren't necessarily all appropriate for what we were doing in class. And I modified a couple others, but I was able to trim it down to, I think it was like five or six questions that I thought were solid and really kind of got to the heart of what I wanted them to be able to kind of pick up from the, from the documentary. And, and it, it allowed for a good discussion. And I was like, I'm satisfied. This is great. You know, and it, and it was, you know, done in like, I mean, the, the, the generation was 10 seconds maybe. Right. And then right, just right. kind of editing it, maybe another like, I don't know, five minutes, 10 minutes, something like that. Um, yeah. And you know, that was, that, that, you know, had I done that on my own, I would have gone through the movie entirely, try to make sense of, you know, what, what's happening when, 
Um, yeah, it, it was just it just wasn't super time intensive to kind of well, map that out. The, the Posi, they're <laughs> like like so the the person that's running the AI system, the the Chat GPT, you have to know your content well enough to know if it outputs a bad question or a bad answer. So you'd seen the movie. Right. And, oh, yeah. Right. Uh, yeah. Right. And so, but, but you didn't have to review the movie. Right. So an, an example is like that. I know, I know you did, Pat, was that um, we were, when we were just running like examples through chat GPT, we asked it to write something on the great Gatsby with quotes or something. Right. And, right. and it came up with a, a quote from the necromancer and attributed it to, to the Fitzgerald and Gatsby. Um, so we, we knew that was wrong. So like the, the weird thing is, is like chat GPT will, will create stuff for you, discussion questions um, and whatnot, but you have to actually know the content to know if it's correct. It's almost like, like I, I, we, we, we've been talking about uh, chat GPT as, a, as an assistant. It's like your own like kind of like teaching assistant in your classroom that you can have create stuff. And just like a real person like that assistant might run off to the copier and make a, like, go get a bunch of samples for you or whatever, and they bring them back, you still have to look at it and then say, ooh, that one didn't work. Like, this, this is not a good example, or that's wrong, or whatever. So you're right. still vetting, but the time to create the stuff, and that's, that's, that's what ChatGPT does really well, and, and we'll get into this on probably a, 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 different, a different podcast, but it's because it's, it's, what's, it's, it's called a large language model, and it's, it's called generative AI. And what generative AI means is that it generates content. It generates words. Um, it, it generates ideas. It puts stuff together. So it's generating. It's generating all these things. So it's just an assistant that creates things for you. You still have to look at it, right? You still have to, if it was an a, a assistant chef, you'd have to taste the food before you gave it to a customer. I guess an analogy. Yeah, and, and I, I think there are a lot of great analogies out there. I mean, you mentioned actually a couple already, and and I think that that's it's I, I think the one that I kind of like is is more metaphorical in the sense of like it's like imagine like the internet's kind of the big mother of all these recent tech that we have, right? Right. And social media is kind of the, the first big baby it dropped on us in a way, uh, and it's it was never a question of like are we going to you know have it or keep it or not. It was like always like no no we want this. But what do we do with it now? And obviously, right. there are going to be issues, just like you might have with any child, right? But that doesn't mean you throw <laughs> the baby out with the bathwater, but you have to figure out how do you nurture it and, and, and grow it and let it kind of develop in its own way. Oh, yeah. Because um, your AI child could be good or bad or, yeah, exactly. or funny or Right. Or, 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 or like with ChatGPT, it's going to sometimes just give you false information. Right. And, yeah. you know, so what kid doesn't lie to you sometimes, right? right. What student doesn't sometimes, you know? Try to pull the wool over your eyes. It just—I happened to me happened to me the other day, and I was like, "This is so obviously wrong. They're lying to me." But you know, <laughs> but but it's one of those things where it's like, okay, you know it's going to happen, but but um, or that mistakes are going to uh, you know come, but that's okay. It doesn't mean that you get rid of the whole thing. Right. You just have to like double check it, make sure obviously that we're using it. Uh, I think responsibly. That students right. are using it responsibly. Um, you know, and 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 I think that in the aggregate, you know, in the whole, it's 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 a huge win for everybody. Uh, because the, the applications are so far reaching. And I think that's one thing that we really are excited about getting into, you know, with, with this, with a podcast like this, which is like, well, what are the myriad ways, right, right. that that we can see it being usable? Uh, obviously, there are going to be some, some pitfalls to it, but nothing's perfect. And right, right. we're not going to hold it up to a purity test. Like, and we wouldn't do that for anybody. I mean, <laughs> we're, we're kind of morons sometimes, and yet... You know, we're, 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 we're smart too, right? Right. Um, so, uh, you know, we're just trying to kind of wade through this like everybody else and like all of you, uh, trying to make sense of like what's going to work, what isn't. But rather than kind of put up walls, which is so easy to do. I think Mike talked, you, like well, you mentioned, like, you I did mean, that. I, think, I, think I certainly a, did that. I think that's a point to address. I think I think if we if we do have some listeners, there's probably someone out there that is just mortified at the idea of this assistant that can do a lot of what you're used to doing. Well, mortified or terrified. Or terrified, <laughs> I mean, right? Geez. I mean, if, if, and if you pay attention to all the media, like there, there's all kinds of doom and gloom stuff with this stuff. But we're, this, this podcast is about how do we, how do we use this technology because it is also kind of a gift. Um, but I think people do have those feelings. I think, I think that the, the worry of plagiarism is real. Mm -hmm. um, and that's going to have to be figured out as we go. But still, the tool is really useful. You know, yeah. it's, it's, it can, it, you can do, you can do a lot of things with it, which we're, we're going to get into more. I think, I think we can probably, we can drop some links and uh, to Pat's assignment for introductions, right? So you can kind of see like what chat GPT uh, created. And I think, I think at a later date, we'll do, we'll do some, some podcasts about like, here's how we did blank, right? And kind of talk you through it and we can provide links there. So when you do, if you're driving and listen to this, you can, you can click on the links and see how we're using it. 
Um, we can also link up a, a website that we, yeah. we started building that it's not awesome, but it serves its purpose in teacher land. Well, and it, it'll be really interesting. You mentioned chat GP4, uh, oh, GPT-4 yeah. dropping. Oh, and yeah. I mean, you got to figure. So from the time that you heard about it back in November, I think most people were hearing about it maybe December, January or so. Right. But there are even still some educators out there that are like, what, what are you talking this? about? Like, we, we, we've this? heard yeah. the whole range already, you know, through our presentations at, at, you know, at different conferences and such. And, 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 you know, whether you're talking about just knowledge uh, or awareness to the emotional sort of, kind, of, kind of state or position people are in. And, and frankly, like, there have been times where I've been super excited. Other times where I'm like, oh, shoot, uh-oh, this is bad. We shouldn't do it. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm kind of there right now with the, the, with the new with, release of 4. Right, I'm, right. I'm, 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 again, having a, oh, my God, am I going to have a job moment. Right. <laughs> no, I get that. Yeah, because it's like, well, what... It does it make like in what ways does it make us obsolete? Or I think actually where we have the advantage ultimately is that because I think sometimes people confuse. They say AI, they think it's it's sentient, that it's some sort of living right. being, and it's just not. Nope. Right, that we are always in control, um, and we have to figure out just how to adapt and use the tool to the best of our ability. So, and we're nowhere near. I mean, you can talk to any of the experts out there. We're nowhere near uh, AI being a sentient thing. Right, uh, and so it, it feels like it is. It tricks in you think of it, thinking that it is, and we're gonna, I'm probably going to do a quick podcast on this too. But but the way it create the way it creates its text is it's just all probability. It's not actually thinking. And, and the weird part about all this AI stuff, and, and even even the fact that I'm like it's an assistant, like treat it like an assistant, is that it's not human. It has no human attributes, and and but we what we refer to it almost as it is. And it's and there's even like ethical people you know, talk about ethics about like should you should should we be creating like the humans should be recreating something that's supposed to be like us like why would we want it to sound like us and act like us um, what, what are your thoughts on the, the anthrop anthropomorphication of of technology? Well, I think one of the things that kind of comes to my mind and kind of coming back to this, this idea of sentience um, at the end of the day, I mean we, that our <laughs> There's that idea that people like to say that the the brain is like a computer, but it's not, right? That that it's a, it's a useful metaphor to a point, right? But as uh, I know, we've had this conversation in the past that metaphors break at a certain point. Robert Frost. Uh, and so this idea that your brain is actually a computer is flawed. It's an organic organ. Uh, it is not something that is built off of uh, binary code, right? Uh, it's not uh, the aggregation of a bunch right, of other right, data right, points. Yeah. It's its its own sort of thing, and it's a living thing, and it, and that is a distinct difference, and it's and it's this most significant difference, you know, and so I, I think that's also where when, say, educators get really freaked out about, oh my gosh, are the, are the computers or the, 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 the AI, the robots going to take over? It's like, no, they never will, because at the end of the day, we want that personal connection. There's something right. fundamentally different uh, between you know us having a conversation right now, and us having a conversation with with some sort of AI program, right. and it can be very sophisticated and it can seem pretty darn accurate. And and in, I think as the technology you know evolves, it's going to be that much more convincing. But even still, we like to be around people. We like to be in three D. Uh, you know, we like to be able to see the body language and and to, and to kind of hear things. I think not filtered through some sort of computer system you know it's it's you know you think about like the pandemic and we were on on zoom for so long uh and we hated it <laughs> yeah, right you know well, educators yeah. wanted to just be in the classroom students generally speaking wanted to be in the classroom yeah sure of course there was there were students that that kind of prefer being online because they're more shy or more introverted or whatever yeah okay you're gonna have some level of that that's fine but the vast majority are like i just want human contact right that 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 you know there are certain things that technology just can't do. And, and, and part of it is just simply being human. And part of being human is that organic sort of nature that, that, that we can, so, that, we, that we give. You know? So in some, like the, the question we open with is what is artificial intelligence? It's, it's artificial. It's, it's not human intelligence, but we act like it is because we want it to be for some reason. We want it to be a character, but it's artificial. So artificial intelligence is a great tool for you to use in your classroom to find information. Um, it's going to be changing like any world changing like any other invention has been in the past. But in short, AI is artificial. Well, and on that point, Mike, I think when I think about art, the artificiality of it, I, I guess one, 
what I'm trying to think of, I'm thinking about how it's going to end right there. I know, I know. You can still do that. Pause, I think. (laughs) So you could do that. I know. Shoot. I was trying. That's fine. What was was going through my mind is is that the, um, I'm not trying to overreach here. I think I'm just getting tired. (laughs) Probably. Uh, But no, what I was going to say is that that at the end of the day, I think that the technology is so exciting for us because it's another way to not only create, but also to interact and to connect, right? And yes, we're, we're connecting with like, you know, a, a computer system, but ultimately that, that connection is only valuable if we can then share it with somebody else, right? That like, that, that who cares if you can make a lesson plan if you can't share it with a student, right? Right. right? right. Who cares right. if you can you know, write a story if you can't then, you know, you know, give that to somebody who can read it and maybe, you know, have a reaction yeah. to it. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and so that communication is, is essential to who we are. That that's what we're such a social species, right? That we don't ever want to get rid of that. So I think that the AI is there as a, as a, tool to help us with that, with that connection, but it never replaces it, right? In other words, it's, it's not, it's not the connection itself. It's the tool to help make the connection work. Great. So it's AI is a connector and it's artificial. It's an artificial connector. <laughs> but it ain't the real deal, man. <laughs> All right. All right. We will see, we will see you next week. If you, next time we do a podcast, whatever that might be. Thanks for um, listening. Thank Bye-bye. you. Bye-bye.